stuff and I was recognized for in AP art in high school yep. and um, I really even then in high school I was like well this is really give you know I, I'm an anxious nervous person it was a channel for me right. um, you know I you know grew up in this like affluent suburb but with really challenging family circumstances so school and and academia writing math um, art all of these things were like my w- magical world of mm-hmm. escape and um, most especially drawing and drawing realistically in a way that was I mean I could benchmark against sure. the photo right. um and, and other people could be yeah, this photo. They could and so see, they, they yeah. could judge and be able to tell you, you know, wow, exactly. you, your your craftsmanship your skill. Mm-hmm. is is amazing. And but you know you know but you know, again, you know, as you mature as an artist, you know, it's almost like, you know, you know, I tell people it's it's like your your uh, just like the palette that you have for cuisine, mm-hmm. your palette for art changes, mm-hmm. like, you know, in the beginning you know, you're, you're you're eating Happy Meals, and then you know, yeah, <laughs> and then just over time, you know, like your palate, you know, becomes more and more sophisticated, mm-hmm. right? And you know, even the things that you did that were really well crafted, mm-hmm. you you know, that you were really proud of at the time, you're like, you look back, and you're like, oh, it's not wow. really art; it's a skill you're learning right. on the way to to right. hopefully making art, and you know, in that that craftsmanship, you know, now we live in a, in a, in the art world that the it's an economy of ideas mm-hmm. and people will you know if they want that level of craftsmanship they they feel free to mm-hmm. outsource that level yeah, of craftsmanship yeah, yeah. Right? and so it's it's really uh it can be a really confusing journey mm-hmm. right yeah i think so and i mean my journey in particular we we're talking about talents in different areas um and so I went into applied design and community service, and I just kind of did a walkabout in terms of just finding yourself, um, understanding what is the way to make your practice and make your art in the world. And it was really um, exploratory and and like divergent for me. It's mm-hmm. very different than say you know I you know, the typical story of like I went to RISD or I went to Yale or went you know it was just that was not my path. Right. But I think it made me more certain when I came back that just like this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my right. life and it's a marathon not a sprint. Yeah. Um, and and also the acquisition of skills too. It's like when and right. you live in a world of YouTube tutorials. What does it mean to get um, you know, to go to the university to learn about art, right? Because right? it's not about those, uh, the craftsmanship level. It is, like you said, an economy of ideas where, um, you know, f- fidelity in rendering and graphite might be an important part of your work. And right. if that's if that's true, then certainly it should be there. Uh, but being able to... Um, to pull back from virtuosity but I see it you know engaging with technology in my work I have to kind of like tap the brakes sometimes because I'm not a new media artist I'm engaging with new media I'm uh, both my parents um, can code anything um, you know you know in the world um and sounds also, like there's a collaboration yeah. that needs yeah, to be yeah <laughs> exactly well we we have um uh, so i i tap them they're, they're uncredited collaborators right <laughs> but yeah i mean i learned everything that i learned i mean i was very hands on in making my digital prints i learned the entire i mean the entire history of inkjet rendering pigments mm-hmm. um it, from from like the man who invented mauve of like aniline aniline you know, dyes and, or pigments, right. um, synthetic pigmentation, the history of natural right. pigmentation, and how does that translate into the world of commercial printing now, fine art materials now, where are the lines mm-hmm. blurred, where are the opportunities to sort of trouble things, and um, so I felt, like to, I felt like to do that, that I needed to get my own equipment, and so I got these large format, just like behemoth equipment and so i really needed big hp yeah and... big hp and z6100 and like learning um the computerization um there's page description languages and mm-hmm. all of this and how that works and how that works with the actual uh machine language right. and 
and how it tells, you know, this droplet to go there and, you right. know, all of that. So for me, it was really interesting. And I, and I think, um, as, as someone who's like mixing and, and blurring the two, it's like there is an impulse back to the idea of the extreme talent and craftsmanship in the graphite drawing. Um, there is a wow factor just on its own with the technology that you have to be careful Mm -hmm. um, about leaning into. So, you know, making the art, having the ability to render very well is um, dazzling. And you have to be careful not to be lazy to lean on, lean on that. And, and on the other side as well with automation. And so I feel like the middle path, the middle way is something that I'm, I'm always trying to kind of find, um, but it, it never stays in balance. You have, right. you find your ways back and forth. Yeah. You know, I, I thought about that recently. I was listening to, um, this podcast where they were speaking with the folks that had invented singularity black. I don't know if you right. Mm. And so the end, you know, they're talking about all these amazing things that you can, you know, that they are learning about being able to do with it from an artistic perspective. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, you know, for listeners that don't know, it is the blackest black you mm-hmm. can possibly buy. It, it yeah. are, it's uh, made out of carbon nanotubes and it just absorbs light. Past Vanta black, right? Right. It is, it is, you know, theoretic, you know, theoretically non reflective. And so, you know, they're doing things like, you know, coating sculptures with it in, you know, a 3D object looks like a silhouette. And as you move around it, it looks like a different silhouette. And um, and so, you know, I was thinking about that, like, wow, you know, it is so new. This is only a year and a half, two years into it. Like, you know, there's an opportunity to like really dive headlong mm-hmm. into using that. How do you, how do you, how can you use it? And then, you know, yeah. like, oh, well, you know, but I'm thinking, you know, if you if you make it just about the material, if you make it just about the technology mm-hmm. and what it can do, mm-hmm. you know, that, that is, um, the shelf life of that work yeah. is going to be really short. You yeah. know, it still needs to be great work yeah. regardless of, of the material to the or the technology. human condition. I think like that's what interests me and in anything I've looked at throughout history, contemporary or otherwise is interesting to me is that it's, it, you know, so often I tend to gravitate towards high formalism and art about itself. Um, but you know, the Laura Owen show, um, at the DMA, it's so great. It's very in the vein of high formalism, but she's talking about being human. She's talking about being a mother. I can relate to that. She's talking about, you know, uh, digesting the history of painting and trying to contribute mm-hmm. something new to that. How immense Right. And, uh, weighty that task is. And it feels futile at times. The best that you can do is just make your work and hope right. that it en- engages, that you're connecting. Um, and, and I do think if you, you know, see relevant shows, you know, you do need to learn about your craft and about the materials and the materials mm-hmm. always changing, right. you know? Um, but even in that example, you know, um, it is inevitable that the change in pigmentation um, advances in that area, advances. And that is, it's the perfect example of how um, technology and fine art materials, they're never separate. It's always right. impacting. I mean, even, even um, paint materials now are, um, you know, pretty much fluid with CMY mm-hmm. um, production now right. is that you can, you can th- Think as a painter in the language of printing and vice versa. Sure. Um, and and I so, actually yeah. have my painting class. I've taken them through. I try to, in one year, take them through like half a dozen different ways to think about doing a painting. And um, and we've now got to the point in the year where I'm having them work with a limited palette of, of um, you know, alizarin crimson, a really bright pale yellow ultramarine, and... and white and burn umber and so it's like you know what <laughs> you're you know you're not gonna be able to to make neon out of this well you know we can accommodate whatever 
But, you know, f- you're going to learn how to color match, mm-hmm. you know, and think in terms of, you know, yeah. you know, is the value, you know, hey, I- I've mixed something here. Is the value, you know, a lighter or darker? Is Does it need to be warmer or cooler? Mm-hmm. And you're going to figure out how to match to whatever you need to get to. Yeah. Mm. And the impulse, too, towards thinking... Uh, and light, lighten colors with white, darken colors with black yeah. instead of, you know, going around the color wheel and thinking about temperature yeah. and all, you know, all of those things. Things like opacity and transparency in, in the pigments and, right. um, how that works, um, uh, together to sort of create the glow that's only possible, you know, with oil paint, Absolutely. you know, uh, and so I think, well, I think about that a, a lot in terms of the screen, right? So mm-hmm. if I'm painting digitally, like there are works that I've made that I just made them to be seen on a smartphone because there's no, there's no point in right. me bothering with printing it. Because it's not going to be backlit. Right. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to be in the RGB. It's going to be translated out of RGB language. Perhaps, yeah. You know, so uh, no, even no. if you have, you know, whatever codec you're using to be as faithful right. as possible, it's not going to be backlit. So, right. um, Which, you know, in, you know, I start, you know, I try not to get too geeky with my students about, <laughs> you know, reductive versus uh, additive color. And, but I, I totally want to start, like, you know, going that direction. I've even, you know, I'm I'm playing around with some some ideas in my own practice right now that you know involve uh, maybe backlighting some stuff and you yeah. know, utilizing transparency, and it's possible right? Now. And yeah. you know, uh, see where that goes. But you know, because I I love building up layers mm-hmm. and I love transparency. And I love the transparency of my oils, and you know, I'm you know starting to play with the idea of you know adding you know, adding a light box. To, yeah. You know, to that yeah, and, and I mean, you goes, can paint you know. on things now. I mean, you can paint on glass. Oscar, right. Oscar Fischinger. I'm sorry, I just butchered that for the listeners. Oscar Fischinger, <laughs> um, which easy for you to say. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am fascinated with. Um, so I taught a seminar in um, painting, digital imaging, and video, mm-hmm. and this guy is like. You know, he worked on Fantasia. He was fired. I can't remember why. So I don't want, if it don't, please don't uh, take this as defamation of his character. Right, right, it was right. amazing. Um, I think he was more interested in the high fine art of right. uh, what was possible with the moving image and painting. And he was mm-hmm. making these oil paintings in reverse on glass and photographing them as frames. Right. Um, and uh, so there's like composition number one. I, um, you have to, it's not on YouTube. It's on, uh, it might be on Vimeo, but you can find it online anyway. Uh, it's like an 11 minute long p- video painting. Mm. Um, so if you think about what that translates to in terms of, and, and if I'm not mistaken, it's one or maybe one or two brush strokes at a time. So he's stop motion animating each brush stroke and the discipline that that takes. Um, so it's, it's, you know, oil on glass, um, but it is luminous, you know? Um, so it's not only the luminosity of the oil paint, but it's the, it's the literally glowing light of, you know, the flickering light that it would have actually been, um, at the time it's just like, I'm obsessed with it. And then there's Amy Stillman's, uh, you know, iPhone cartoons and those kinds of things that are really fluidly, Making it, um, you know, it's not really something that's, um, I would say is mainstream, but I think it's certainly more possible to lean mm-hmm. into that and push the edge of things right. with that kind of work now than it would have been, I would say, even, you know, three or four years ago. Sure. So, um, so yeah, it's exciting. You should do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to see the work. I'm really right. excited about that. And some of my own video work um, is now possible yeah. for me um, because I've invested in some new equipment to start um, pursuing it. But I always kind of try to stay with the materials as right. much as I can to ground myself. I mean, a lot of the sketching process right. um, of paints that I have in my studio uh, is part of my beginning process and always generative, but half of the time I'm just sort of re-digesting right. those materials, rolling it out, you know, crumbling it up. Sure. Or, um, well, I mean, you know, you, you hope to, you know, find some sort of treasure in experimentation, right? And so, like, I've been working on Canvas for years and years and years, and, you know, recently I was started, you know, I was testing out using the same materials on Upo. 
you know, it's like a translucent Yupo. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and, it doesn't soak up anything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it was just, it, it just, it, it was, it looks amazing. And it's like, and it just wants to sit there. And then, you know, you know, I, once it dried, I flipped it over. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, I can see. 